Everyone is doing stuff. We're going to talk about monsters and other Mine. things. Yep. All right. So, hey, everybody. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, you got Jim here. Hey, Dave. Rip. And welcome uh, to Behind the Screen. And we're going to be doing this little video on, as the title of suggests, homebrew monsters and how to use them to mess with your players. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's always fun. Sometimes the monster manual can get a little bit stale, or you just have something really cool in mind. So homebrewing a monster, or just typing into our good friend Google and finding <laughs> something that relates to the word you might have made up. Yep. Come up with a picture. And what better way than to go over a few now as a group and talk about them? Because a lot of the things Jim has scrounged up, I have not seen yet. So nope. this is all new to me. And I've kind of seen them, um, but not actually read over them. So I don't have a huge idea about what sure. a lot of them are. Um, I'm excited. Yeah. And another big thing is uh, like me and uh, Dave were talking about earlier today when we were talking about doing this video was uh, it's really hard to not metagame. Yeah. Uh, the example I used was like, I, Jim knows that fire works well against trolls, mm. but my character more than likely doesn't know that. So it's really hard to, to not be like, well, fuck, this thing is like really killing us. And I know that if I use this spell mm -hmm. or if I go grab this piece of wood on fire and hit him with it. Yeah. But I, my character doesn't know to do that. So. And that's where metagamers like to do. Can I use a roll to see if I know anything about this? Yeah, that's that's the most common thing that you're gonna find. You find ways to skirt around it, but you're 100 percent right. Like metagaming in itself, it's really hard to put yourself in that mindset, especially if you're a veteran player mm. or even a DM where you've read through the the monster manual. Yeah, and then you sit at the table as a player and you're like, "Well, fuck, I know what these are." Sometimes it's a pain in the ass to keep your mouth shut. Yeah, and act accordingly because essentially that's what it is: is acting. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely hard. So these are some some cool little homebrew things I found on Pinterest. I'll put you some links in the description below after we're done, so you can go grab these actual blocks uh, to use them. Sure. I mean, that's kind of what we what we're doing with Bingo Book, though. Yeah. When you think about it, we're homebrewing enemy NPCs. Yeah, definitely. They're not crazy monsters, and they all kind of have a tie into where they're a little bit more. Humanoid, I guess, would be the term. Yeah, they're humanoid. Yeah, so you would use that instead of like your frog hemoths, or mm. in this case, the astral chimera. Right. But it's still something that no one can look up, mm. per se. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, if you've got one of those players that's, you know, the kind of player that's sitting over there on their phone, Ugh. and they're on like, you know, I've got the PDF of the monster manual up while we're playing. I'm listening to descriptors and just looking like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So it's green, so that's going to discount all those. So, I mean, something, something like these, if they don't know that you're going to be using it, there's no way to, oh, yeah. to, to prep for this. I used quite a bit of homebrew in the straw game. Yes, you did. A lot of shit. From that, what you've told me. Yeah, a lot of shit I used, like I pulled off of, you know, my good friend Google, and I was just like, this sounds pretty dope. This fits the scene of what I want to do. And, yeah, it's kind of nice, especially when you just kind of throw a weird haymaker out there in terms of a creature. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. All right, so, yeah, first thing we've got is the Astral Chimera. Cat dog. It's <laughs> cat dog, which I love the look of it. It does look really dope. That, that is, let's see, because do they have it? No, they don't have the... Uh oh. Alarms and things and stuff yep. and things. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, created by primordial gods in direct response to the summoning of, I guess, the Demogorgon. Mm -hmm. uh, the Astral Chimera serves as the counterpart to the regular Chimera. Um, I mean, if you really want to read, I'm just going to give you some quick descriptors of them. It's like a typical specimen has uh, the back legs of a goat. The hind quarters of a tiger, the four quarters of a lion, and two heads. Uh, one more wolf-like than the other, and the other feline. Yeah, cat dog. Oh, okay, feline and wolf. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So it's a cat dog. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> I was like, they're the same head. Nope, cat dog, tiger, yes. and wolf. Right on. 
Uh, so yeah, so they, they got some. Uh, they're innate, ma innately magical. And uh, servant of the primordials. The astral chimeras are servants of the primordial gods uh, that created them. They follow their orders almost unquestionably. There you go. Uh, but they still may be reasoned with. Uh, but it's it's just extremely difficult. So just looking at this, it's a large monstrosity. It's a big creature. Yeah. Um, AC 14, that's not that hard to hit. Nah, bigger creature, it's still pretty easy to, to take a stab I mean, at. Assess, especially looking down here at a challenge rating 10. So it's going to be, you're obviously going to be a higher level. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you're like a big group of party. But I mean, AC 14 in a group of four, someone's going to hit. Oh it. yeah, you really should. Especially at higher levels, because I've seen us at like fourth level having a plus 10 to hit. Yeah, and you're, you you're, hit. Not, you're, you're not missing unless you're rolling like a or three. Yeah, you, you should be able to. And with 180 hit points, it's it's up there, but it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got no negatives. What? Lowest being intelligence being 11. That's okay, though. Yeah, there's no negatives. It's an order machine. It just takes orders and goes. Yeah. Ethereal Jount is one of the features. Yep, yep. Uh, you got, uh, as a bonus action, the Chimera can magically shift from the material plane to the ethereal plane. Uh, or vice versa. Okay, so you know if it gets if it gets hairy, he can bounce out real quick. Yeah, he can he can warp back and forth, and it really helps for maneuvering him mm -hmm. on the DM side. So I, I think it's pretty dope. the The wording is weird because I've never seen the word jout. Um, I I want to say I have. I've heard of jaunt, which is like right a flippity floppity hat, right like a big jaunty hat. Maybe that's the same word, and it's just I've only used it in terms of like clothing, right? So maybe that's it, and I'm just like a little behind the times in a more rudimentary way. Mm -hmm. But I mean, being able to as a bonus action go in and out of the material plane, I fucking I take it. Yeah, definitely. Because that means you can attack and then poof, gone. Yeah, pop back. And that, in. that's not going to provoke opportunity. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> And while in that ethereal plane, you know, you're you can't be hit unless they have a special thing that does that. Mm -hmm. um, they can't even see you unless they yep. some, some kind of magic allows them and to you see you. You can it. move around and maneuver. Yeah. Which is nice. It can stalk you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as it knows where it's going, it can get you. Yeah. Uh, it's also got two heads. Yeah. Uh, kind of going back to uh, the Hydra. You know? Um, the multiple head thing, so it has advantage on perception checks. Yep. And saving throws against being blinded, charmed, deafened, frightened, which is interesting. To fright oh, I guess it's the two heads. you got to frighten yep. both heads. Yeah. Um, stunned and knocked out or knocked unconscious. Yep. So, it's still as wakeful. Yeah. While so one head's asleep, the other's awake. Yep. Then um, it's got some spell cast and shit. Yeah. So at will, it's got detect magic. Sure. Uh, fog cloud, which yeah. I think is kind of cool. I dig it because it adds a little bit of ambience to the coming of the astral chimera. Just fog rolls in, and then he pops out from the ethereal plane, like boo, and then whoop back in. Yeah, and I, I picture the fog cloud coming out of his mouth, <sighs> both mouths. Sure, I don't, um, ass, I don't know. Yeah. Whichever, whichever way you feel like doing it, but the uh, mouth is sounds pretty good. <laughs> got a silent image, which is kind of dope. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, once a day, he can use dispel magic and major image. Nice. That is that either one of those. Well, especially the dispel magic can really mess somebody up. Yeah, but even the major image, because the yeah. major image can talk, it can yeah. make noise, it can move, it can do other shit. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I think I believe all except for touching. Content. Yeah. So for all intents and purposes, as long as they don't touch it, it's another one. Yeah, so. Um, and three times a day, it can use blur. Whoa. And uh, detect thoughts. So you're not going to outsmart it if, if you really, if you're trying to, like, you know, we're going to lure it into a trap, blah, 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 blah. It can detect your thoughts. Yeah. And then blur is just making it that much harder to hit. Yeah. I love blur. Blur yeah. and, and, and mirror image are like two of my favorite spells. I dig Misty Step. You like Misty Step? Yeah, the little 30 foot teleport. Mm, yeah, that is. Uh, it's got a multi-attack, so it can make two bite attacks for the heads mm -hmm. and cast uh, an at-will spell 
from its innate spell list. Ooh. So it can make two attacks and then fog cloud out. Silent damage or detect. That's nice. I mean, and that's the action. So my whole thing is like it can, it can attack you, fog cloud, bonus action. I'm out. Yeah, and that's all. Yeah, essentially. And then you know, pop, pop, cloud. Don't out. if you don't tell your players that it's it's it it went to the ethereal plane, mm-hmm. then or ethereal. I say ethereal. It's all safe. Oh yeah, it's just an um, But uh, you know, if you don't tell them that, they're going to be swinging at nothing or maybe at each other by accident in this fog cloud. That's where silent image can be fun too. That's true. Yeah. That's you very true. Silent image your, uh, over yourself, and then you ethereal out, mm-hmm. and now it's where it was. Very, very true. Yeah, no, you, th- I think that could be really cool. Um, bite. So it's got a plus seven to hit. Yeah. So it's got a pretty good chance of hitting. Oh god, yeah. Um, an average of fourteen damage. Three d six plus four. Pretty good. That is, and the target must succeed on a DC fifteen wisdom save or take another. 18 average psychic damage Ooh. or half as much of on, on a success no. no matter what you're taking six nine yeah nine for that for the psychic damage so all together nine 20. 23 yep so minimum 23 damage 23 bite. if you're using averages 46 46 if you do count both bites uh-huh. true very true <laughs> oh my god it can, i mean it's a challenge. It's a CR ten for a reason because it can just eat somebody up. It really can, and this, then pop away. Yeah, if this thing corners one person, expect them to probably die. Fog cloud, and then just pop back and forth, and really just stalk in the cloud. It's like pop, pop, gone. Yeah, where did Billy go? Yeah. <laughs> it's very uh, going back to the other episode, like the Jurassic Park we were talking about, where it's. Very uh, stay out of the long grass. <laughs> yes, yeah. and they're just like popping out, and, like yes, heads. <laughs> yes, like, like, that's a good reference. Yeah, so that's the uh, that's the astral chimera. Yerp. I would use that. Yeah, that, that would be pretty dope. But I do like it, like, especially as an ally. <sighs> yeah, I'm a I'm a beastmaster ranger. Can I use this as my companion? <laughs> How much money do you want to pay me? <laughs> would be my rebuttal. Sure, you can. You're gonna pay me some cash, though. <laughs> like it's physical cash in hand, and I'll let you fucking play with it. I mean, that's that w- your pet that you want to bond with. Sure, give me like sixty bucks. <clears throat> yeah, make it worthwhile to break my game. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty. I mean, the only thing that would probably make it a little bit less is if somehow you found like a baby version but i'm pretty sure these things were just created as is yeah they're just poofed that that's it's pretty awesome though i dig it hell yeah any little last thoughts on uh oh let's uh i I do want to so it has a saving throws it's got a dex of plus eight saving throw Mm -hmm. and then charisma plus seven Mm -hmm. which i think is pretty pretty interesting yeah Uh, i kind of dig it i mean it's skills i Perception, intimidation, and deception all sit quite well. Yeah. Passive perception of 15. So that's pretty good. Yeah, there's much it's not seeing. Yeah. There's a lot that shit that he, it's going to pick up and see. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it's looking and has advantage on it. It's got a plus five to it. And it has a pretty beefy swim speed. Yeah, it's got a plus 30 swim. Which is kind of interesting. I, I, I don't think I would have taken that as a swimmer. Wait, wait, wait. Go back up to its HP. 24 d10 plus 48. So that's the average. Yeah, average is, is 180. <laughs> You're looking at 288 if it's maxed out. Because what? 24 times 10, 240 plus 48. Yeah, 288. Good lord, max that thing. Yeah, I would probably max that out. Um, Yeah, it also has dark vision for 120 feet. Yeah, it's, it's seeing... And I mean, 120 feet, although it's basically shades of gray, it's still pretty good. On top of the fact that it can still go into the ethereal plane. And I can't remember if you can yes. see. You can. Yeah. If you're in the ethereal plane, it's you can see the, the material plane. Yeah. You, it's like ghost world. Yeah. Yeah. You That's can't interact cool. with it, but I don't know if you can pass through walls and stuff. I think so. Can you? Mm-hmm. You might be able to. Okay. So, so, so e- either way, I mean, this thing could literally be up on you if you're like, okay, we're you know, we're in a 
secluded place that's all blocked off. This thing can literally just pass right through the wall. Unless you're using like the tiny hut thing. <laughs> yeah. Because then it's in its own pocket dimension. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Trying to be a little... Oh, there she is. Looking for my daughter. We had to put like a high-tech security camera in her room yeah, because I she's know. like a Houdini. I was watching you move it. It was like, really? It's like... <laughs> it's it's straight up baby jail right now is what you've got going on. Yeah. Well, she and she learned to hide from the camera. She knows like when she hears it, she'll, she put up her pillow last night and like got behind it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, guys. So that's the astral chimera. That's I, actually pretty dope. Good find. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I really do like that. And I like that picture too. Yeah, I do too. That's a really dope picture. Next, click, click. Evil doll. Oh god, yeah, I've seen this one too. I, I I've run across it a couple times. I haven't ever really dissected it yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought that would be kind of interesting to do. Thank you, Stone Strix. Uh, monster, monster a day. Yeah, and, and then, then thank you, Miguel Regadon, for the picture. And I'm sorry if we butcher any names or anything. Yeah, let's see how you did. Alrighty, first off, what picture? <laughs> just your daughter. So, yeah, because her face popped up on the camera. I just kind of <laughs> all the way. I was like, whoa! All right. <laughs> I see you, Dad. <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of disturbing. Look at the nails. Got nails everywhere coming through it. It's like a spiked bat, but oh just in like cabbage patch form. Give me a hug. No, I'm, I'm passing. That's like that creepy cabbage patch one that you got your daughter. Yeah, no, we got this like new. Okay, you, you, my aunt got my daughter like a cabbage patch kid yeah, for Christmas. Ugh. And we're we're it's in the packaging and we're like oh cool cabbage patch you know we she gets her first cabbage patch doll woo we open it and it's like animatronic yeah it's got digital eyes and shit yeah and, it's and it likes to sound and like touch you know? right I'm, I'm over and that. then there's like an app that you can download so that if she drops it or doesn't feed it the fake food or change its fake diaper it'll tell us and it's like M Margaret why are you not taking Thank care you. of your fake baby doll. Well, they used to do that shit for people like in like sex ed home ex shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you had to take care of something. So that's pretty much the same thing. They took that program, put it in a creepy ass doll for kids, and said, "Here, <laughs> let's see how responsible your child is at the age of two. Right. Three. Oh God, and that thing was weird, man. Yeah. It, okay. It, it it it's for girls. She, my daughter gave it to me right after she got it, and was like, "Baby." And then I look down at it, and I'm, you know, I'm playing with her. And then all of a sudden, this thing goes, "Dad, dad, what? No, why? Wait, you're for girls. Why are you saying dad, dad?" <laughs> and we looked it up. Dad, dad is not one of the programmed speech things for it. So we're like, "How did this thing start?" What you don't realize is Margaret's a tinkerer. <laughs> Tinker no. She's just in, in her bedroom, like, ba, 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 like goggles on. <laughs> she's she's gone from the camera again. There she is. No, she's she's stalking. Yeah, yeah, she's walking back and forth. Plotting. <laughs> stalking. I'm gonna make poison for him today. She's done like her make-believe kitchen. But regardless, we digress back yep, to the yep. topic of ham while you guys are all here. The evil doll, tiny construct fiend, lawful evil. Yep, yep. AC 14. Which is really kind of funny. It's it's as hard to hit as, as the, the chimera. chimera. Because it's so small. Yeah. I mean it's got 21 HP. So it's not it's not beefy, but I don't expect it. No, I mean it'll take it. I I would expect on average two to three hits to kill it. Not with those fucking resistances and immunities. Oh, that's so true. Look at this stuff. First off, no negatives. Yes, sir. Strength. Where? Oh, yeah, snap! I I saw a thirteen there. Yeah. No. Okay, so it's not strong. I I expected that though. That's true. That's true. Very true. But let's see. Deception plus six, perception plus four, persuasion plus six, and stealth plus seven. Yeah, those fit that perfectly. <laughs> yes, it's it going to lie to you. It's going to find you. It's going to fucking talk you into doing things you don't want to do, and it's going to hide from you. It's Chucky. Essentially, yeah. It's Chucky. Kill yourself. <laughs> what? And just pull on a string. It's like a speak and say, but it only has like five words that are really <laughs> fucked up. And then it's got a... a Fuckload of resistance. Yes, it does. And piercing, slashing, all from non magical weapons that aren't silvered. So, not only do they have to be uh, magical, they have to be silvered. They have to be silvered. Unless he was meaning to break that up. Right. Or either non magical, magical weapons or, or silver silvered weapons. Right. That would make more sense. But 
let's say for brevity's sake, it has to be magical and silver because then it's just mean. Uh, immune to fire? At least it's not immune to them. It's just resistant yeah, to Yeah, but it's immune to fire. It is immune to fire. That would be my first go-to. I know, right? Like, burn it burn down. Burn it down. <laughs> Kill it with fire. I get the poison, but Jesus, that's brutal. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get poison because, you know, it doesn't maybe it doesn't have to breathe or something. Yeah, it's not a lot. It's a construct. Yeah. yeah. Same with charmed, exhaustion, frightened, paralyzed, petrified, Petrified and paralyzed, like there's. I no, would think that would they think would that work. That would work. Yeah, in some way, I guess instead of paralyzed, look at restrained. Sure, uh, but that's where petrified would come in because petrified would be turning you to stone. Yeah, I, 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 I maybe because constructs you can have stone constructs. Yeah, stone golem. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Then paralyzed, I guess. It's like you you have no way to kill this tiny little doll. Yeah. It's yeah, it's, 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 it's got a massive dark vision. It does. And, and a passive. pretty good passive. Yeah. Oh god. And it can telepathy it's, for 60 feet. It can talk to you <laughs> telepathically <laughs> with persuasion and deception. Dude, you give this you give one of these dolls to your player as like a let's loot the body. Okay, look, you've asked me to loot the body every time you you start the game. Cursed fucking item. There you them. go. Yeah. Oh. And then they just carry it around. Yeah. And it starts like implanting the thoughts and stuff. Yeah, because now it's a it's a sentient cursed item <gasps> that comes alive when the player is not looking at it. Very Toy Story esque. Yeah. <laughs> something that I would probably add. It might be further down, mm -hmm. but something I would add to it was like it could mimic the voices that it hears. Sure. Kind of like a kinku. Yeah. So then. It can talk and telepathically communicate with you in like your party members' voices oh. to like implant this doubt in you. Yeah, that's brutal. That would be pretty awesome. It's got, as far as its abilities go, it's got devil sight, which means magical darkness doesn't impede its dark vision. That's Good awesome. stuff. Fuck you and your globe of darkness. I'm still gonna find you. Yeah. Oh, dude, that'd be so creepy. It's on my leg. <laughs> it is. It, it's just like Toy Story because it's just like a mimic. Well, it has the an anime. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's indistinguishable from or an ordinary doll. It's got innate spell casting, which was par for the course. DC fourteen for yep. a spell save. That's pretty good. Though. That is pretty good. Suggestion at will. Yes. Oh my god. With yes. the telepathy. Oh, that is awesome. So dominate look, person. Yeah. <laughs> but look, if it stays inanimate. Mm -hmm. It has telepathy. Mm -hmm. So they won't find it from an ordinary doll. Mm -hmm. And it can use suggestion. And if dominate person doesn't need verbal or semantic. Let's look it up. If it doesn't need hand signs or talking. I mean, even if it's talking, though, it may. It can do telepath yeah. telepathic. So talking is fine. Uh, so what was it? Uh, dominate person? Mm -hmm. Same with modified memory. Uh, dominate person. Semantic, so it needs hand signs. It does need hand signs. Uh, what about modified memory? Modified. <laughs> oh god, it can fucking make you go not remember that it moved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the no. fucked up. Oh. Modified memory needs verbal and, and semantic. And hand signs. Yep. That's okay though. Uh. Wisdom save on a DC 14. I think both of them are. Yeah, they both are. Um, so, and so, 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 so this doll can modify the memories if they, if you fail of, which I would personally say that if you're a DM that just wants to kind of mess with them, don't give them the save because they don't know the doll's there. No, I'd give them, I'd give them the save, but I wouldn't do from the events of the last ten minutes. Well, because it's it's uh, what it is is uh, the they can affect the target's memory tw in the last twenty four hours, but they can't modify the memory in the last ten minutes. Oh no, I'd let it be a whole twenty four hours. I'd let it be a whole chunk of their memory. Like if they saw this doll move three days ago, mm -hmm. I know that something's up with this doll. And it uses modified memory. Mm -hmm. I would erase the, the thought completely uh, of the doll moving. Did yeah, you feel that save. The doll gets to choose what 
it modifies and it's gone. It's like this thing never even was a thing. Yeah, it, but also changing it. Yeah. Like maybe, you know, you, this is one of those things that also is the, it's a heavenly doll. It's a heavenly doll. And your friends are trying to kill it. Kill it, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, maybe it modifies, it, it places, even if it's not like, I think this is what you were saying, you know, it doesn't matter the amount of time. Mm -hmm. So it can implant itself in your childhood. Oh, God, yeah. And so you've had this doll. My mother who died yeah, this gave me this thing. doll. And they're trying to kill it. They're trying to break it. And now you're going to fight to the death over this doll. Oh, yeah. So that would be that'd be awesome. Then into the next one, Undying Evil. Look at that shit. I was reading that the whole time we were doing this. <laughs> if the doll is destroyed, it regains all of its hit points and, and reappears uh, at a nearby location in 24 hours unless a removed curse spell is cast on its remains. So you ain't killing it. No. And I would say, like, it's it's not just the nearby location. It's, it's your nearby location. Yeah. It's almost like a tune to it. Whoever touches it first or something. Again, going back to that cursed item. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so this thing just always reappears. And then it modifies your memory. So yeah, <laughs> you can't remember that it Ugh. something was weird about this doll. The actions for it are really good too. So we got giggle. <laughs> One creature of the doll's choice within thirty feet of it must succeed a DC fourteen wisdom saving throw or take seven on the average two D six psychic damage and become frightened for one minute. The target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns with disadvantage if the doll is within line of sight, ending the effect on itself on a success. Huh. So if the doll's within sight, they have disadvantage on the roll. But if they pass the roll, it ends it. It gets... And it's not meant to... Like, the, the damage done is, is minimal. But the amount of damage it can do in terms of just like collateral, yeah, is massive. I wish I had a little remote. We're once again we're watching my daughter. Yeah, being able to be able to turn her TV back on. Yeah, because she's down for a nap and she she woke up. So we're I, she, she got up, she played a little bit, and then was like, "No, I'm done." Yeah, I'm gonna go lay down. She's completely as long as she, we we just had she's able to crawl out of her crib now. So we had to change it from a crib to a big girl bed. And now that she has a big girl bed, she can get in and out at all she wants. And she's completely content being in her room. Yeah. Unless she's hungry. Yeah. And then she might eat me. Can't help you with that. <laughs> yes. Um, all in all, uh, what was that guy's name? Go to the bottom. The one who created it. Yes, yeah, Stone Strix, dude. Good job. Yeah, no, this is an awesome, this is a really good job on a fucking monster, man. Like, I, and like I said, I've seen this before and kind of wanted to look into it. Yeah, I've seen versions of the evil doll. I've seen the picture before. I probably have seen this exact one, but I never really gave it too much mm -hmm. attention. I'm right there with you. So, like, again, that just shows that goes to show that, like, sometimes you might roll across something and not really look at it twice. But yeah, dude, Stone Strix, awesome job, man. Yeah, I, I applaud you. That that is a really good monster. Yeah, because it's it doesn't have to be killed per se, but I mean, even if you remove the Undying Evil, sure, and just just the other stuff. Now imagine, like you know, I need you to go purge my my dog factory. <laughs> and there's like 30 of these things. 300, just a mountain of them. Yeah. <laughs> they all talk, but only one of them is actually the target because the rest of them are just dolls that talk. Yeah, right? That would be kind of... I, that's like, if you want to run a horror campaign or, or session game, whatever, bam, there you go. That's a creepy little actually thing. You guys avoided that in Curse of Strong. Really? Yeah, that lady with the doll. Oh, uh, right? Yeah, that little doll was a monster. <laughs> yeah, that little doll was a uh, Piddlewick. Yeah, it was a little jester doll thing. Like, uh, and oh, it was, God. Puppet Master. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and, like, yeah, he was his own thing, and, like, that was its own setup. But you guys were like, fuck this lady. <laughs> you, you're Get crazy. Out dude. of the way. We broke into your house, and now we're going to break back out. <laughs> Run! All righty. Next. Fiend Sworn. What? And this is one of those that's actually more like a mini boss kind of guy. Okay. That's a pretty awesome picture. I thought that was like a Dragonborn slash Tiefling for a minute. 
they, I, I can see that. Because now that you zoomed in, I can actually see the face. Mm. And it's just a barbarian looking dude who's got some crazy shit going on. Yeah. He's got some Hellboy hands. Yeah. He's got a whip or a tail. He's whip. Got a whip. That's a whip. Okay, so let's see. Fiend Sworn. A Fiend Sworn has undergone a process to make them more like a fiend. Uh, some do this to serve infernal masters, while others do it to better hunt fiends. Sure. Become the enemy. And I guess that's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, see, walk the line. Fiend Sworn uh, always have to fight against the darkness inside them. And Super Leader. Or Leaper. My bad. <laughs> Super Leaper. I was really excited there for a minute. Um, so one common attribute among all Fiend Sworn is that they have the supernatural abil leaping ability. Um, they use this to, to surprise their foes in battle. Hm. Tactics. The Fiend Sworn, sworn uh, will use surprising leap to close the distance to a foe or to maneuver around uh, and target a spellcaster. Hm. So I, I, I like that, that they've added this little like play tactic. Sure. Uh, it's kind of sound like what we do with Bingo Book. Yeah. We, we, this is kind of how they're meant to be played. Yeah, sure. Because otherwise, I probably wouldn't use the surprising leap all that much. No. Uh, so let's see. Medium humanoid, any race. Um, and something that I, I, I thought about, I was looking, while I was looking through stuff, I ended up coming across like a, 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 like a rat shaman or something. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and it said any race. And something I thought about is this could almost be like a template. Yeah, essentially. And then, so, like, if you do, you know, a Goliath, mm -hmm. these are the base. So then you add two to strength and one to con. Mm -hmm. And then you adjust it that way. But he's got a breastplate. Give him a 19 AC. That's the highest yeah, AC. Yeah, that's a heavy armor. And then even though he has less than 100 HP, that's some heavy armor. <laughs> that's a lot. That is. Uh, no negatives. Nope. Uh, with three sixteens. Yeah, he's sitting pretty tight. He is indeed. Uh, Dex and charisma saves. Acro, insight, perception, stealth, and religion. All very useful. All really make sense. Yeah. I do find it interesting about religion. That's one Not thing. really, because fiends... That's just something you don't see all that much as far as monsters go. No, but fiends tie heavily into religion mm. in some form because you've got like your fiends, your devils, your demons, mm. stuff like that. So those can all be learned about through various religions. Right. Right on. Okay, yeah. Uh, they got resistance to cold, fire, lightning, and poison damage, and bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non magical <laughs> weapons. Uh, dark vision 60 feet with a passive of 15. Yep couple different languages as well so you've got your common your abyssal and infernal uh challenge rating is seven so he's not super hard but depending on how you play him can be really really good now yep. the ac of the fiend swarm includes its charisma bonus so fiendish blessing just increases that ac even more well, i think it, it's already included because i think the breastplate is like a 16 or yeah it would be a 16 yeah um. <laughs> uh, I think my daughter now is trying to get out. Let's see. So I hear some kind of banging. Is she at the door? Yes, she is. <laughs> I'm sitting in front of the door. All right, so we'll finish up the Fiend Sworn real quick. Let's see. Uh, da da da. -da. Okay, so suffocate. Uh, when the fiend sworn hits with its fiendish whip attack, it can choose to start strangling a creature. That's kind of cool. Uh, the creature must make a DC 15 constitution saving throw, uh, beginning to suffocate on a successful save or running out of breath and beginning to choke on a failed save. <laughs> the fiend sworn cannot make any attacks while using this ability. Sure. Now, see, where I would change that up a little bit would just be um, they'd have to make a grapple. Mm -hmm. Like, if they attack, they can choose to grapple instead, and then that would do the suffocate. Right. Because then now, if they fail that, now they have to make that, that con save on top of whatever they were doing. True. That would be me, though. I mean, I like the, I like the mechanic 100%, though. Yeah. I think it's awesome. 
Yeah, I, I do think that, you know, that they would have to, if they hit, then they can attempt to grapple. And then if that grapple is failed, then the creature is, is strangled or being strangled. Yeah. And then at the start of every turn, they have to make uh, either a, a strength save to pry the thing off or yeah, something. Uh, let's see. We, here's that high jumper ability. Which, what did they name it over here? Surprisingly. Surpri oh, that must be an action. Yeah, it is. Okay, so high jumper, Fiend Sworn, uh, is always under the effects of the jump spell. So it's three times the jump distance. Yeah. And it cannot be dispelled. Yeah. That's cool. That's good. Multi-attack. Two Fiendish Whip attacks. Sure. Which is a plus six to hit, a reach of 15. Um, it's an average of 10 or 3d4 plus three piercing damage. Which I, th I think it would be slashing damage. I guess, what is it, thorns or something? No. It's just a whip. I don't know why it would be piercing damage. Meh. Yeah, probably just that's what they thought it would work. And you didn't really yeah. about it. You know, that uh, happens. And then plus 7 or 2d6 uh, fire damage. Um, and the target must make a uh, DC 14 strength saving throw or fall prone. Woof. Oh, my God. So so if they – because this stack, so if they hit you, yeah, you're going to have to make a, a save. Yeah. And then you also have to make this save. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. So, so if you fail the falling prone, now you're prone. Then now you're being choked out. And now you're being choked out. Now, oh, it's just cool. I made the strength save. Well, now you got to make a con save too. Yeah, you're still making both saves regardless. That's okay. So that kind of falls back into that grapple mechanic mm -hmm. where I would do this, but suffocate would only happen if the prone, yeah, the, the strength saving throw fails because now they're on the ground. And it's just tightening it up. Yeah. Like this guy has such control over that whip to be ordered to make that that mm -hmm. grasp and that suffocate. It's almost like an animated whip or something. It's like he unnatural movements with just it. Indiana Jones in it. Yeah. Like he's just good with it. <laughs> now here's a, a weird thing. Now, okay, so up here it would seem more like the surprising leap was at will. Mm-hmm. Um because it's because it's used to maneuver around and target yeah. spellcasters. Yeah, but he only can use it. Uh, well, uh, he has a recharge. Recharge of of I mean a recharge of like you know like four through five or six or whatever. <laughs> but this is during a shorter uh, a recharge on a shorter long rest. Mm -hmm. So I mean he's using it once per combat. Well, maybe he's seeing it. Well, wait. He makes both of his attacks, with, so that actually adds more too because now he's getting those attacks with advantage when he uses it. That's kind of dope. So maybe you figure the surprise is gone now. Mm -hmm. Party knows they're in peril. Right. Whatever he's going after knows it's in peril and it's in danger. So he's getting the one leap and going towards that tactic where he's not just running in. He's always going to leap in from some advantage point to get the advantage on that attack and then to have the advantage to hit, make them make that saving throw followed by that other saving throw. Some that I would find interesting what popped into my head was him jumping up using the whip. Mm -hmm. If they fail those saves and they get strangled and he jumps up, maybe like over a branch or something and then just exactly. and hangs them. Yeah. And now he's holding the whips. Now it's the other party's members. Okay. Y'all have four rounds or something to, until he, even though that's not how it works in real life. Well, be your, your constitution modifier is how many minutes you can hold your breath. Yeah. But at that point it's, it's not breath. It's, uh, asphyxiation. Mm -hmm. So the oxygen to the brain. Yeah. So but that's if you're even... struggling and you're not using or you're not using as much. Mm. You might be a little as long as you're not moving too much. You're not speeding up that blood loss because you're cutting off that blood. Like yeah. you said. Yeah. So I mean, uh, it, it it depends on how you want to play it. Sure. It, it's but that concept to me seems really cool. The, Did they call it strangulation or suffocation? Suffocation is what they, which is actually not what it would be. Which is where I was getting the. Yeah, haunt. Stat. It's suffocation. A lot of people don't actually know that though. That there's two different kinds of ways. Where it's like a headlock while I'm suffocating you. Well, actually, a headlock is 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 not strangulation. It's strangulation. It's, it's not suffocation. Suffocation is is no oxygen mm -hmm. um, to like your lungs. You're not able to breathe, uh, which is what kills you in drowning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and then strangulation is when you don't have any blood, blood. blood in the brain yeah and your brain runs out of oxygen and that's what kills you yes you're not able to get air in and people yeah. think <gasps> but you're yeah 
Uh, so I would say that's probably what they were more so going for. I get for. you. Yeah, and they just mix it up. Um, or it's maybe it's a special kind of – maybe it's so tight that they – they really just can't. But that's that's that crushed at that point. You can crush the windpipe, but you're still cutting off yeah. blood flow. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean that's. I still dig it. I mean, do we have a shout out for anybody? Nope. No. There be nothing there unless it's way hidden. I don't see it. Nah, I don't see anything. Okay. So yeah. So what, what do you think about the? Uh, I dig it. There's a few little retweaks I would do personally. Mm -hmm. Um, just things that I would go about changing or rewording or retooling, but I mean, out of the box, just straight off the picture, it's not terrible. Right. I, I dig it. It could be really worthwhile. Mm. I feel you. Doing Pilates now? Yeah. Whatever. All right. So we're going to take a quick little break while I go get my daughter and get her some food. Um, and then we'll be right back. Yeah, man. Thanks for watching. Stop the share screen. Boop. Boop. Oh my god, what's happening? It's
All righty, welcome back, guys. Sorry about that little pause. Uh, okay, so let's see, where were we? We just got finished with the Fiend Sworn. Mm -hmm. All righty. Um, so, any closing thoughts on the Fiend Sworn? Other than that, I would just retool some stuff. Uh, I think it's really good. I mean, me and you personally, we both seem way worse out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for first attempt, 101st attempt, it's still really good. Like I said, minor retooling, minor rewording, nothing too crazy. Nah. I like the the, the whip concept. Oh, yeah. It was to suffocate, strangulate, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, and then... I, I would personally probably look at like maybe doing the leap at a recharge of like six or something so that he has the possibility of doing it multiple times in a combat instead of just once. Yeah. All right. So let's see the next one. Uh, this was one I thought that you would really like. Forest Walker. Made with. There it is. So, this is the Forest Walker, created by Philia, art by Laura Sadler, made with Home Brewery, which we are currently experimenting with, experimenting with ourselves. So that's pretty cool. And then, uh, you, you know your computer better than me. Yeah, yeah. Zoom a little bit, The picture's pretty dope. I like. It. Yeah, no, that's what drew, drew me to it. Drew me to it. Yes. Uh, originally, was this picture. It's just a living tree. Yeah. Like elvish tree makes like eight eight and elf. Yeah. Chaotic neutral, medium size, armor class, natural fit natural armor fifteen. And that's something you also don't get a lot, is that it is a plant. Yes. It is not humanoid, it's not no. monstrosity. No, it's a plant. It's it's not fey either. Mm -hmm. It is plant. Which is nice. I mean, it's got a decent chunk of hit points. Oh, yeah. A low challenge rating, though. Yeah, it, it is lower than some of the things we've seen. No silver, no negatives as far as the stats go. It's got a wicked high strength and constitution, though. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, I'm, I'm at least glad that they left this uh, vulnerability of fire. You don't see it all the time. Mm. Like, a lot of times it's kind of implied that there's a vulnerability. Right. But, uh... Yeah, that they, they specify a trail like, yeah, this is a plant. This is fire. Another big thing that would work hardcore on it would be blight. Yes. Because it would deteriorate the plant and pull the essence from it. Mm hmm But uh it's got a plus five animal handling skill. Yeah. Which I I, I like things like uh creatures that have something like that. Mm -hmm. Especially if there is a beastmaster in the party. Sure. Because it's gonna try and talk the animal down. Yeah, and I mean it's it's chaotic neutral, so it's not necessarily bad. And then it knows Sylvan. Yeah. So like if you have a Beastmaster who has sort of an oddball kind of pet or partner, mm -hmm. like a dire wolf or something. Yeah. They would know Sylvan. They would yeah, understand true. Sylvan. Very so true. Your your whole concept of like talking to it would be a big deal. Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk you down from whatever you're doing or convince you to do something else. Right. It, it knows common, but all it can say is, I am grouped. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's it's very uh, grooty. It, it, it is very grooty. Um, environmental resistances. So, Forest Walker has advantage on saving throws against non magical hazards and effects. I don't know if I would do that. That works in some regards, mm. but fire should not be an advantage against saving throw, regardless of magical or not magical. That's true. Like I think they meant it more like in the forest, yeah, like woodland kind of thing. Oh no, no, I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, but no, I, I totally. It's understand. just I, I wouldn't let fire or things that can burn acid stuff like that. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to be magical, but, would, like, those would be, like, your key things. It's not a lot. Well, even, like, you know, cold. That's Cold fine. kills plants, too. Not so much trees, though. It might Man. make the foliage go shitty, but... Some, some trees it kills. Yeah. Um, that's why you gotta wrap some trees up in I certain parts of the world. Yeah, I get you. Um, but, like, I, I, it, like, from the background and stuff, I don't think it gets cold there. 
No, that just looks like a very verdant forest. Um, some that I, I think we did skip was the fact that it has the damage resistance to bludgeoning, and piercing, and piercing, which is which is cool. And I did skip it by mistake, but it's, it's that's period. Yeah, and I mean it's wood. Yeah, slashing, sure, sawing, great. Yeah, piercing and bludgeoning. You're not punching a tree down. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Forest camouflage. Uh, the forest walker has advantage on dexterity stealth checks made to hide in woodland terrain. Which makes a lot of sense. It can blend into the forest. Yeah, most certainly. Bling, bling, bling. I mean, it should be if it's in forest environments yeah. and it's not moving. It's completely hidden. Yeah. It's just auto blending in. Yeah. I Well... Yeah, as long as you haven't seen it already. Like the evil doll. Yeah. Because if it's not moving, it just blends. Even if you've seen it, like if it makes it, depending on how fast it moves, it's got a speed of 30. 30 yeah. So it can move pretty quick. Yeah. And if it can get away from you for a second or just get into a cluster of trees and it plants itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Uh, let's see, we've got reactive. For each branch, the forest walker can attack. Wait, what? For each branch, there should be a comma there, I think. For each branch, the forest walker can attack with beyond one. Okay. It gets an extra reaction uh, that can be used only for opportunity attacks. So four. I guess so, yeah. It has four branches. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. You just look at his hands. Yeah, I, I, when I saw, like, I would think that they would say arms or hands or something. Branches. He's yeah. a plant. Well, I was thinking like these. And I was like, what? What's oh, going on? That'd be pretty dope too, though. Um, but all since all trees are different, you have to <laughs> you literally have to flesh out a tree for every twig and branch. Yeah, right. Like seven hundred little twigs and get seven hundred attacks <laughs> of <opportunity laughs> and they all do like one d four piercing <laughs> or slashing. Even if it's just one, it's just I would I would give them the ability called cut a switch. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> he just whips at people. <laughs> swack, 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 swack. Yep. Uh, That'd be pretty brutal. Speak with beasts and animals. Or uh, beasts and plants. Yeah. Forest that's... Walker can communicate simple commands to beasts and plants I would uh, so. when it speaks in Sylvan. So in, so even if it doesn't, if the animal doesn't speak Sylvan, it can still communicate basic uh, commands to them. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, Multi-attack. Here's their actions. Or it's actions. Uh, it has four branch attacks. Nice. Um, it's a plus six to hit with the branch. Uh, ten on average. Two d six plus three slashing. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, if the target has already been hit by a branch this turn, instead of dealing damage, the Force Walker can use two of its four branches to grapple the target. Yeah. Escape DC fourteen. Uh, until the grapple ends, the target is restrained, and the number of branches attacks. The number of branch attacks the Force Walker uh, can make is reduced by two. So for the grapple, yeah. Okay. So so if it hits you once, it can use uh, two of its arms to try and grapple you. Sure. And then now is it an auto grapple instead of dealing with this? Can use two of its arms to grapple the target. So period. It's so it's going to grapple yeah. you until you can try and escape. Because you're, it's making four attacks. Right. So, so hit you once, grapple you. Now you're restrained, and then slap, 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 slap. slap, slap. Yeah, and but but after that, it can only make two of the branch attacks. That'd be funny if it gets in like a bent over position, and literally <laughs> cut that switch. Slap, slap, slap. Switch, switch, switch. Yeah. <laughs> Who told you to act up? <laughs> uh, so we got in route. That's the final little action ability thing it can do. Mm -hmm. uh, the forest walker is standing on dirt, sand, or clay. Which it should be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It pl it plants its roots, reducing its speed to zero. Sure. Until it takes a bonus action to end the effect. Mm -hmm. While enrooted, the forest walker automatically succeeds on saving throws and checks to avoid being moved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and and regains ten hit points at the start of its turn. Okay, so it has a little. It has a function to heal mm -hmm. and a function to be preventative towards knocking over. Yeah. Being prone because it being, automatically succeeds any yeah. saving throw. Now, what if you have a dude who can push over a tree? This thing's magical tree. Yeah, the roots go deep. <laughs> it uh, goes deep. <laughs> is it deep? My roots run deep. Right? Always try to the find ancestors. Go of Groot. Well, <laughs> the, the best advice I could ever give anybody looking at homebrews or trying to DM, look 
look at it objectively in the form of how can your players break this? Mm. If you find a way that you, if you think you found a way that your players might exploit this and or break it, like what if my character can not push over trees and he has such a high strength? What if I roll a natural 20? Can I push it over? Like those are things you kind of got to look at. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, yeah. Oh, he and roots and then they just immolate him. Yeah. Get your 10 hit points. Fireball. <laughs> that's, that's my whole thing is like, yeah, you're getting 10 hit points back. But then you're screwed. And now you're catching on fire. And just like, no! <laughs> he just uproots and starts to run. All forearms flailing. Yep. I think I like him. I like him a lot. I think he's really, really well done. I like the art. I like mm. the style of it. I I just really dig it. Because it doesn't have to be a monster per se. And it doesn't True. have to be bad. But there's consequences to getting on this thing's bad side. Yes, there are. I, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that there's not, what is it, like Forest Walk or something? Mm -hmm. Like the, the tree stride or yeah, something? Yeah, uh, transport via plants. Yeah, and, something and like that. I'm surprised sure. there's not something like that in there for him. The only thing I would do, the only thing I would probably add that, or at least let him transfer consciousness. Yeah, that would be awesome. Like if he plants himself. He can, yeah. His roots can tangle up to another tree, and now he can transfer. Yeah, I like that a lot. That I would do that as a bonus action and make that forest camouflage and immediate, so that way he can just plant his roots and then and just hide in another yes. tree. I, and even so, even if you destroy this one, he he's over there. Else. Yeah, no, I really dig that. that I that's, think that's what I would do. I would change forest camouflage to be an automatic. It's uh, unidentifiable between any other ordinary tree, hmm. and it gives him the chance to change consciousness to a different tree wherever he roots to. Mm -hmm. So he roots in the ground, and there's other trees around. His roots can spread out, and he can now take that shape. But once he starts moving again, he can't hide anymore. Right. Because now he's turned into this. Right, yeah. I, I would also probably, like, like give him when he in, in roots, mm -hmm. give him things like entangle. And oh god, yeah. Other little uh, spells Let that them are, come out and like yeah. weed up shit and keeps up. Yeah. Um think things such as that. Um, other than just getting a hit point back yeah. and being unable to be knocked over. Definitely. I'm gonna snare you guys out. He's mm -hmm. got so many roots. He yeah, can snare that. up so many people. Yeah, no. It's it's I I because I, I think like your idea of being able to transfer consciousness would really make the players have to think differently yeah like we have to destroy everything within 30 feet of him mm -hmm. and then have to kill him because it's not just murder hobo this yeah no they, they the really have to be lumberjacks of the highest quality yes just <laughs> burning the forest down yeah i mean you Which can then, murder as, hobo it you can by just burning <laughs> everything down but smoking the owl bear is not going to be happy with you right that has some some, some consequences maybe yeah. you get onto the bad side of the fey <laughs> Essentially, yeah, or just the primordials for that matter. Yeah. Or an elf clan. Yeah, yeah, there's so many different ways you can go with this. Alrighty. Let's see. Next. Zoom. Boop. Oh, this was a cool one. What the fuck is that? I can't uh, it's, see, it's just a white screen. <laughs> so it is the. Keeper of the old lords. Oh, there is somebody there. Wait, no. I thought that was like a duck. <laughs> it's a duck. I can't, like, make out a person. Yeah, arms. Yeah, I got that, but then he's got, like, face. <laughs> dark winged duck face. <laughs> no, that's a hat. <laughs> Where's his face? There's just the bottom part of his face. I don't even see that. I just, <laughs> I just see the... Okay, I can see a little better now from the witch's hat. But from my <laughs> angle where the glare is, I just see orange bill and like a cone here. I'm like, why is he a duck head? Oh my goodness. It's literally Howard the Duck, but like gone super edgy, and I'm not okay with this. But yeah, now if I look uh, at your perspective, there is a little bit of a head right about now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Makes sense. He's just got a really big witch's hat. And I can actually see it now because before it was just white. <laughs> Some kind of body, duck bill. <laughs> duck and I was just, I was really confused. Like, what does that have to do with old lords keeping anything <laughs> or being really goth? Like, this just does not fit the role, but now it makes sense. 
Yeah, I, and, and the way I kind of see it is it's one of those characters that's like a uh, like a mini boss or maybe even just like sure. a low level boss. Sure. Uh, Keeper of the Old Lords. Um, there's no little text on him or anything. I almost would make him a cultist. That would probably make sense. Uh, medium undead. So right off the bat, he's undead. Chaotic nice. evil. Okay. Okay. Um, got a breastplate on, so AC 16. That, what? All right. Red flag. I don't want to interrupt or get in the way of this wonderful description. Oh, my goodness. But we have an alarm. Um, looking at this guy. Looking at this right here does not signify breastplate. So that for me is a little weird. Um, I, I it's kind of early judging a book by its cover, but that's where I kind of stand. More so, I'd probably put in like padded leather, studded leather, something, not a breastplate, because this dude is not wearing heavy armor. Not even close. Um, but I digress. We move forward. He's got an AC of 16 with his air quote, air quote, breastplates. Um, 209 hit points, which is huge. Uh, speed of 30. He's really no negatives whatsoever. And I mean, he's got a 20 in con and 18 in strength. 16s on everything else except for intelligence and wisdom. But he gets plus four to his saving throw for wisdom. Weird. The charisma I get, but the wisdom's a little off as far as his saving throws go. But I didn't make it. Um, damage resistance to fire. Which, okay, sure. I mean, I guess I could see that. Um, condition immunities. Charmed, exhaustion, frightened. I definitely dig those. I, I agree with that 100%. He's got dark vision up to 60 feet and a passive perception of 10 because he's zero wisdom. So that's not bad. A challenge rating of nine. Okay. I don't think I agree in terms of the hit dice used. The armor class. And then the resistance. And the saving throw. There's a lot to not agree with, apparently. But I'm a little more picky, I guess. Um, when you start moving into his abilities... He's got Fire Sword. When the Keeper is at 105 hit points or fewer, it can ignite its sword as a bonus action. The Keeper deals an additional 14 average or 4d6 fire damage mm -hmm. on sword attacks while ignited. The sword remains ignited until the Keeper finishes a short or long rest. Okay. I'd probably be able to let him be able to douse out the flame on his choosing I mean the the hit point restriction is nice I'm, I'm interested there and he's got a max of 209 so it's about half so when he reaches about 50% that's not too bad um, and the damage is good it's just not being able to douse out his fire sword whenever he pleases is kind of wonky. That's just me. Running slash. If the keeper moves up to 15 feet straight toward a target and hits them with a sword attack, the keeper deals an additional 7 average or 2d6 damage. I would assume bludgeoning? Just for running in? Kind of the collision? If the Keeper's sword is ignited, all creatures in a line 30 feet long, 5 foot wide, behind the target, must succeed a DC 15 dexterity saving throw 
taking or take 14 average 46 fire damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Uh, it started off good, but this one's kind of getting me a little ruffled. Um, the charge is nice, and the extra damage for the impact to follow behind that slash is nice. But having him do a 30-foot-long beam of fire past the target you hit if his sword is on fire, and then making everyone that's behind him in that five foot wide, 30 foot long line have to do a DC's deck save or take damage, like a scorching ray or a fireball that's in a line, kinda, kinda puts me off. I feel like that's a little too overpowered for what's going on. I don't know, what do you think? I just got back, guys, hi. Okay, so let's see, so just, Looking at it, because it kind of hurts some things. So the fire sword. So once he hits about, you said about half, like half life? Yeah, about half life. Because he's at 209. Okay, so yeah. yeah. So about half life, he can ignite that sword. I get that. I dig that. Okay, yeah. But then he's not, it remains ignited until he finishes a short or long rest. So he can't turn it off. Mm -hmm. That's a little weird. That, that just, It seems more like a, like an oh shit button that he should be able to activate. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, okay. You're a little bit stronger than I thought you were. Trump card. Maybe can't magically light that blade. Yeah. He can only redo it if he finishes a short or long rest. Or in the terms of case of like a homebrewed monster, it would be on a recharge. Yeah. Because monsters aren't taking rests unless they run. And yeah. you're going to assume if that monster escapes the party and it's just gone for the rest of that session, he's going to have a rest. He's yeah. going to have everything back. He's going to come back with full HP and, and ready to go. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so probably just taking out that last little bit of the fire sword. Sure. Would 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 put that. I mean, I could see where thinking on now, I could see where it makes a little more sense. Like if they try to douse the flame themselves. That's true. Like if the party tries to put out the fire. Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. I get that. But you can make that an amendment of that would be flames kind of cannot dope. be put out unless the user puts them out. The user can douse the right. flames. Can only be yeah extinguished. As as a action or bonus yeah. action by the user or something. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe they can only be put out by non or by magical means. Yeah. Like they like they can't just like throw him into a river or something. Yeah, like ah sword's wet, dude. No more lighting that on fire. I cast rain cloud on this guy. <laughs> uh so then uh then you got the running slash. Sure. Uh so I started kind of reading it. So if he moves fifteen feet in a straight line towards the target, hits mm -hmm. them with the sword attack, deals extra damage. Yeah, so he doesn't have to be running and he only has to use half of his movement. Okay. Yeah. Which it's like I a would, charge. I would yeah, but I would probably do twenty foot. Yeah. Like using Go most ahead. of their movement. Yeah. And really getting in there. Yeah, because otherwise you're gonna be able to make if he can make multiple attacks then uh, with the sword, then he's going to be able to make at least two of these. Yeah. A turn. Yeah. Um, and if the sword is ignited, all creatures in a line in a line of 30 feet long and five feet wide uh, behind the target. Yeah. Let's make a DC dexterity save throw, take some fire damage, no matter what. Yeah. So like if, if this is the target, uh-huh, and the keeper comes up, hits him, connects, and it's on fire. Then fire shoots out behind the target and hits everyone behind it in that line. I, 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 because I heard you kind of saying like either that didn't make a lot of sense or whatever. Yeah. And I'm kind of right there with you that that because if you're doing more like a running charge, it's more like a, a slash, like a kind shoulder of thing. charge or like a hit, and yeah, then a, a tackle. Yeah. Like, you're putting your weight behind that extra. So there's a little bit of, like, a bludgeoning. Like, okay, damage isn't labeled as what the extra damage is, but it's extra damage. Right. So that's cool. Mm. But being on fire adds that fire damage. Then the damage from the slash plus the extra damage from the charge. Mm. But having that beam come out behind it and go through it, it's a little too over the top in terms of, like, not bashing but like very anime esque, like my yes. ultimate attack. Oof. I I see where you're coming from, but because that's what because if y'all know me, then then I picture everything anime. I'm right there with you. But like normally with anime, 
the person that, that took that attack would take the brunt of it. And they would be dead. There would be no yeah. line. They would stand back and swing the sword and create that line. Mm -hmm. And then everybody within that line is going to have to yeah. make some kind of save. But for this, it's I I, I don't I think I would remove the line. Yeah, that would be. They're cool. just going to take that extra instead of They're the seven three hits of damage through there. I would even leave the seven in, like the two d six for the charge. I mean, more like probably maybe even doing just the fire damage. Okay. Or doing both, you're going to take some extra fire damage because he's you know yeah gets a Gatencho kind of thing and sure he's sure more fires coming out because of the speed and. Mm -hmm. It's his ultimate attack. Actually, that, that makes that actually just sparks something in my head. Instead of that, keep the fire, keep the the charge, mm. but take out. I guess yeah, take out the charge damage, the two d six. They get if he charges at you and hits you with that slash attack, and your sword's on fire. Make it an impact. Yeah, like you get the slash damage, but then you have to make a dexterity saving throw or take four d six fire damage as like a bomb. Right. Boom. Yeah, and it's just you. Because when I read the end of that, it makes me think of, like, Piccolo, special beam cannon. And just very, like, blows out the back mm. and just keeps on going for miles. Like, well, damn. Yeah. I like, feel you there. No one's going to roll in, like, have a hole in their chest mm -hmm. and be like, I'm totally fine. I only took, like, three right. HP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So that, that'd be me. And if, and if, if you want to keep something similar to this, mm -hmm. I would say cone. Instead of line, sure, Oof. a little fifteen foot cone, and then it flames as a break out, yeah, like a an arc and slash, yeah, and like flames break out in a cone and just skirt out, yeah, yeah. I think like a breath weapon, yeah. It's essentially a breath weapon with the sword, and gotcha. it's just that would actually be pretty dope. You take a run and do like an arcing sweep, mm -hmm. and if it's on fire, it does a breath weapon, yeah. They're pretty cool, and I mean, and I think that. It, you could either keep the slashing and there's just some fire goes out. Sure. And, and, and does the cone. Sure. Or instead of the slashing, you just have to move that, that maybe keep the 15 feet. Sure. Or up into 20, like you and me were talking about. And instead of slashing, just do, you know, 66 sure. fire damage sure. as this ultimate <sighs> fire. One big cone blanket. Yeah. I gotcha. And then that deck save, because yeah. I mean it's 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 not an impossible de deck save. No, but it's 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 up there. It's, it's a stronger deck save. Everything, it's like it just seems pretty hard. And like, yeah, we're nitpicking this one a little bit harder, and more so me, just because I'm reading it as I go, and this is the first time seeing it. Yeah, I haven't read this one at all either. So, well, let's move on to the next one. And I, um, and I think I'm more nitpicking it because I really wanted this one to be good. Yeah. Um, just because I like the picture and I like the keeper of the old I, boards. I do dig the picture. Um, so multi attack. So he can make uh, two attacks with the sword, nope. or the or wait, the flame burst, or the flame burst. Is that this one? Nope, nope, that's this right here. Okay, okay. So let's go with sword first. So so wait, does that mean so he can make two sword attacks or two flame bursts? Two, yeah. Oh God. So he has two fire ranged bursts. Yeah. Two up close melee bursts. And that's not including fire swords. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Okay, so plus eight to hit with the sword. Yep, that's par for the course. Yep. Um, now it's only nine average. Yep, 1d10 one one plus, plus four. four. So it's lower damage as far as most monsters would go. Yeah, but the caveat is the yeah. the 4d6 fire damage when ignited. Yeah. So so he's really gonna start getting harder when you get him to that halfway mark. Sure, sure. Uh, flame burst. Um, so it's the range spell. Part of the course. Sixty to one hundred twenty feet. Still pretty, pretty average. Yeah, seven to hit, and then forty six fire. Now something that I wish they would have kind of explained mm -hmm. is where's this fire coming from? Is it only when the sword's ignited? No, he just has that. I mean, to I'm, I just wonder if there was something that explained like or showed that he had something else. I I get a little more, but really that's just put up as a um just put up as a i can make fire right so sure right so he's almost like a fire elemental yep. kind of guy he, he has a flame wave flame wave recharge yep. hey, there's that recharge uh the keeper projects a 30 foot cone of fire all creatures in this area make a dc 15 deck save taking uh 8d6 fire damage the equivalent of a level five fireball yeah 
uh, or half as much. Uh, yeah, so he he's basically creating a fireball, but instead of a radius, it's a, it's a cone. cone. Um, I would I would probably fuse these two. Mm-hmm. Basically, make him do the run. Yep, and then give him the recharge. Yep, and and then Boom. use that. Yeah. Um, Ring of Fire recharge of six only. Yeah. Uh, the keeper slams the ground with a fiery fist, sending a ring of fire outwards. All creatures within a thirty foot radius of the keeper must take a DC fifteen or take. Okay, so it's it's a fireball. This is literally a fireball centered on him. Yeah. Okay. So he's got fireball cone, fireball around him, fireball line, <laughs> and then fireball line, <laughs> and then just fireball. <laughs> because he, apparently we figured out where it's coming from. Fiery fists. So he just bro fists out and shoots a fireball. Like that flame burst. Yeah. He's a firebender. That's what it's looking like. Yeah, he's a firebender. And I mean, that's fine. That's cool. I, I think he's a little weird for the undead. Yeah, and he has he has resistance to fire. Okay. Which I don't quite dig either, because you can burn the undead. Yeah. But that's also where I was kind of getting willowy with the breastplate thing. Right. Like, the picture they chose was kind of misleading, and I understand it's just art. It's just an idea. Yeah. So I get that. I don't think I would... If this dude's this agile, I wouldn't give him heavy breastplate. Right. I just wouldn't. That's yeah, me. no. If, if dealing with fire, you're thinking a little bit more fluid. You're thinking very quick. Yeah. Very harsh. Yeah. Um... And things like that. So yeah, I probably would have just given him a higher dex base AC. Sure. Uh, uh, his AC is because I believe you're going to have. Do you have disadvantage with the breastplate? You do. So I with mean, the, with the heavy breastplate, yeah, heavy armor, yeah. Uh, let's see, breastplate. No, you do not. You don't. Nope. And sixteen. Um. Oh, okay. That's why. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the breastplate gives him 14 plus dex mod, maximum of 2. So then, that's actually wrong. He would have 17 AC. No, maximum of 2. Oh, maximum of 2. Yeah, yeah. I thought I said minimum. No, maximum. Yeah, because okay. originally I thought that too, and I was like, wait a minute, he would have a 17 AC, not 16. Okay. I mean, I, I like, I get it. I understand that. Mm. What's He's got a high enough strength to wear it, so he's yes. got a high enough con to do it. One of the things that weirded me out that I was talking about in the beginning was the saving throws. He has a plus four wisdom save, but he has no wisdom. Uh, okay. I've never come up on that. I want to say I have. Now, I know I did a homebrew thing for Tabitha because her slaves. Mm -hmm. had, I used zombie stats for them, mm -hmm. and uh, they have like no wisdom. Yeah, but... I gave them a plus zero mm -hmm. to the save, the wisdom saves, um, because they had like a four wisdom or something. Yeah. So, you, but you you didn't imply anything good or anything bad. No. You didn't take away from it. Now his wisdom is average, so there's no bonus, but he gets plus four to it, which throws me off. That's just me though. I mean, that means he has a plus four proficiency modifier mm -hmm. uh, because the. The charisma, it, it, it's backed up by the charisma. It has to, yeah. So. That's where that's coming from, but it's just a weird choice for a saving throw. Yeah, I would I would probably go more with strength or con mm -hmm. as being the, the, hi, baby. My daughter wants to talk to everybody. Um, You're playing. Uh, so last thing we have to go with. The reactions. The reaction. Dodge and slash. Uh, so when the keeper is targeted by a melee attack, uh, it can make a sword attack and move up to 10 feet away from the attacker. The keeper does not provoke opportunity attacks against the movement. Whoa! What? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I, as soon as I got through literally his first line, when the keeper is targeted by a melee attack, I was like, yeah, oh god. So that's not a reaction. That's an automatic, is the way that's worded. Is whenever he is targeted, she is climbing that gate. Um, whenever he is targeted with a melee attack, he automatically can do that and gets no opportunity attack against him. Right. This isn't as a reaction. He can, which is what it should say. Yes. And then that would be a little more or less broken. It's still broken on its own because he's going to make an attack and move 10 feet away. And, like, it's it's 
And this isn't just like when an opportunity, uh, an attack is made against him. It's when it's when he's targeted. I'm going to attack him. Yeah, he's going to attack you first. Yeah, and he's going to get to move away from you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are targeted by a melee attack. So fighter comes in, sword in hand, goes. I'm going to attack the keeper. Cool. Just know that before you attack, he gets to hit you because you're now in range. He's going to hit you, move away. Doesn't provoke anything. And this always happens. And that's not counting all the damage from his sword attack in general. If right. it's ignited or anything else. I mean, the only thing I like is the fact that at least they didn't do some kind of crazy stuff of, like, I, that, being that, able to, like, combine these two. That one warlock we found. Yes! This is this is more playable than that. It, it is for a monster, but this is, like... This is pretty... It's a little bit OP. We've made some OP monsters. We have. Bingo Book has some pretty, like, no-win situations. <laughs> it does. Gr Anti-gravity. Yeah. Tsunami. <laughs> Grove and Baron alone are some pretty hefty no-win situations. Yes, they are. But that doesn't mean they're not beatable. It just means that they're they're not meant for tiny people. And, I mean, this guy probably isn't meant for tiny people either. He's it's a just CR, He's a CR9. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah, that's up there, but that's not that up there. No, it's... You know, that's not level... T or a CR21. Yeah, and he's got a lot of hit points. He does. That's not going to be easy to... That... This is the guy that you would send against Baron or against <laughs> Grove. Yeah. Because Grove could technically kill him in one go, but with all of the stuff he can do... If Grove makes a melee attack against him, he's, he's doing shit. Yeah. No, that, it's... And he can throw fire from a distance. <laughs> he can throw fire from a distance. And there's... <laughs> So he can burn that heart tree down just by attacking him and hitting him with the fire sword. He can't. Yeah, right? <laughs> if you hadn't seen the bingo book, Grove is one of these guys that's an S rank uh, target. And one of his big shticks where he kind of like goes all out Godzilla mode is if he's near what's called a heart tree. The heart tree is basically his source of power. When he's near that, he can basically one shot everything in yes. existence. But this guy makes it almost impossible because. If he hits Grove, there's now a 30 foot gout of fire shooting past Grove. Yeah. If he's at the heart tree, as long as he connects. Because Grove has to be within like 30 feet of the heart tree. Yeah. And he doesn't have a big AC. No. It, it's just a matter of, it gets kind of hard to, to really make Grove stay down because mm -hmm. of that heart tree. Yeah. This guy, if he hits him, it's 30 feet. <laughs> 30 feet. And so for Grove to go all out, he has to be near the heart tree. Mm -hmm. And if he's near the heart tree, he's going to die. Because yeah. of this guy. Yeah, because he could burn that tree down and it's vulnerability wood, man. <laughs> so this guy would beat the shit out of that forest walker. Yes, he would. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Yeah, I, I, I like you, but you would be dead by Darkwing Duckbill. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my god. Okay. So yeah, I, I think we both agree that there would be a couple of alterations to some stuff. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of retooling that needs to be done on this guy. He's a great idea. I, no, I, I actually really dig the concept. I love fire-based things. Sure, sure. Um, I always have. Um, so to, to just looking at the picture and the name, I already liked him. The fact that he's fire-based, I really like. Uh, I think that it's a little bit OP. I can't actually I'd say that. It's a little past a little bit, but I, I can't. I honestly say that though until I were to see him play. Played, yeah, that's a big key factor too. Right now, it's just opinion. I mean, because let's see. I mean, plus seven and plus. Well, I mean, I guess I can't even go by those because he's got some things that are saves. Yeah. yeah. So unless you're playing a ranger or, or not ranger, a monk or a rogue, rogue or a high level ranger, mm. you're not gonna be doing that well with these saves mm -hmm. so the reaction the most is one of the biggest things that's just like oh i need to reward all of it yeah i, I mean i mean that could have just been because he didn't the person who made it didn't realize what they were writing or how it was worded and didn't take into account that wording it is a big deal yes because raw matters mm -hmm. rules as written what it says on that paper is you know that's your guideline now as a dm you don't have to follow that but if somebody handed me this dude and said i want you to play this in our game throw him up against us 
Any restrictions? No, just whatever it says on the paper. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna be pummeling kids. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty rough. Might as well give them the leap ability. Surprising leap. <laughs> no, because then it's like meteor crash. Yeah, because then you're doing a freaking fire and then you go boom. <laughs> <laughs> and then get like the rushing slash because he's coming, he's down, coming down. down. Oh my god! A thirty foot plume of fire sinks into the ground and reaches the core of the planet, and the planet blows up. He, session yeah, over. But it's kind of like yeah, you know, it's 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 a thirty foot wide radius and a thirty feet deep crater. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's over. It's very very very. It, there's a lot of fun things you can talk about, <laughs> but in practice, I don't think he would function that well. I think that would be a TPK that was not well earned. Yeah, I, I think that he would be a really cool person to more so uh, show the power of like the big bad. Sure, this is a minion. Sure, and they're watching him from a distance, like, and they're watching him just like literally obliterate an army. Sure, single handedly, and then that in puts the fear of God in these players. I mean, yeah, that could actually be a really good story point as well is this dude just mows through an entire army and the, the players watch this happen and like hmm? we don't want to fuck with him right but now you guys are now realizing that this is your big bad this is your b-bag and you're just like have at it how do you I plan mean, to stop this I, i'm a big fan of these like mr mysterious dark yeah. characters oh, God, yeah and i'm very anime oriented so that would be an awesome scene to me yeah there would also be I thought this was a gun originally. So did I. I thought it was like a long, I thought it was barrel a long revolver. barreled revolver. Yep. Yeah. And like, honestly, magical MacGuffin to nullify like ninety percent of what this dude does is what the party would be looking for. Yes. Anti magic field. Any anything anything that's... to shut him down. Yes. To make him more manageable mm -hmm. would be something that the players would really need to find, or they're dead. Yes. Definitely. But. That's just our two cents. Yep. Alrighty. Boom. This was a guy that I actually looked at a little while ago. Um, and uh, and thought was pretty neat. Um, and so, yeah. So, uh, Dave, you can take this over a little bit so I can do some stuff. Sure. My wife just came home. Gotta go, y'all. <laughs> All right, so this is our mask pillar. Uh, it's another one by Stone Strix. Really? Yeah. All right. I'm excited now. That little bit of who made this kind of perked up my interest a little more. I mean, the art's really good. Uh, medium humanoid, any race, really. Chaotic evil. Armor class 15 studded leather. Fits the persona really well. Just under 100 hit points on the average, but 13 D8 plus 39 if you really want to roll it out. So he's got room to run. Speed of 30. He's going to have a higher strength dex con. Base intelligence with an 11. Wisdom and Charisma both at a 14. Saving throws, Con plus 6, Wisdom plus 5. He's running Athletics, Intimidation, Perception, and Stealth. So plus 7, plus 5, plus 5, plus 6. Yeah, so far he's looking like he is super well-rounded. Like... Everything so far that we that I just talked about is just insanely well rounded. I'm starting to really dig him out as I get down. His passive perception is good. Oh, excuse me. Knows any two languages, being a humanoid, <clears throat> leaves you the room to really kind of flavor him up. And it doesn't have to be calm. Nope. Hell no. It does not have to be common. It can be just any two which languages. You can, which which means that you can make him very exotic. Yeah, and he does not speak the common tongue. Yeah. Which then adds that level of player it, interaction because now there's a language barrier. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and with the fact that he's got a mask on, you're not reading facial expressions. Mm -mm. I think that'd be really cool if you give him something like 
abyssal and infernal or even sure. infernal or celestial some very exotic languages she stole your keys and uh and you know they're like rattling off okay i'm gonna try in dwarvish okay half no okay and then all of a sudden they're like you know maybe um One of those infernal wild. yeah and and then infernal yeah. and you're like why does he not know common and all these other languages but he knows infernal this dude's a demon oh god yeah definitely <laughs> definitely and he's challenge rating of five and then we move into our features aggressive uh, as a bonus action the killer can move up to its speed towards a hostile creature that it can see half orc just straight up e Pulled the half orc <laughs> ability straight up, and I yeah. dig it. I, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, no, as a bonus action. So he can use basically dash as yeah. a bonus action. If he uses dash as an action, he can move 90 feet. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, so far, Stone Strix, man, you're you're batting a thousand. I'm starting to dig it. Yeah. Ambusher. Advantage on attack rolls against any creature it has surprised, so essentially assassinate. Yeah. If, if, or sneak attack. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just with an advantage instead of a fistful of dice, right? Which I, I dig. It's plain as day, but it's, it's functional. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, relentless. Recharge after a short or long rest. So if the killer takes twenty points of damage or less, that would reduce it to zero points. It would reduce to one instead. Okay. Okay. So it's it's harder to kill this guy outright. I would do that as a six recharge yeah i can see that i wouldn't do it as a short long rest just because again if you're if your bad guy is getting away from the party and you don't play even if he in game time doesn't come back for hours he will have rested uh, so other, that makes sense otherwise if you want to do something along those lines i think what they're going for is maybe do it like once per day yeah like a, a one a day ability yeah I was thinking the recharge of six, mm -hmm. just because, like, say this dude, like, gets back up to one, and then he takes that one hit of damage, and they roll it again, and he has it again, and this dude just will not stay down. go down. And it's yeah. always just like, I'm going to get one more jab. Shit, I'm dead. But the DM's just on fire right now. It's just, mm -hmm. I roll a six again. He gets it again. and it just Or doesn't... something like the, uh, like, zombies have, where yes. it's the amount of damage that they, what they took after zero. Yeah. And then you just have to roll a d20 and beat that DC. Yeah. I think that would be pretty dope for him. That's pretty good too, yeah. I mean, I still really like it. It's still a really good function. And then yeah. surprise attack, if this is like the, the PHB, we'll see. Uh, so if the killer surprises a creature and hits it with an attack during the first round of combat, uh, the target takes an extra 14 or 4d6 damage from the attack. It's it's assassinate. Yeah, because he's getting advantage. Mm -hmm. And then he's getting that. So it's sneak attack assassinate. Yeah. Yeah, so I dig it. He he's really meant to 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 one and done you. Yeah, just burst you down. Uh, so he's get multi attack, so you can make three attacks. Yeah, multi attack, three attacks. Pair that shit in with aggressive. He's, yeah, because <laughs> now he's rolling six dice. If he's stealth <laughs> and he uses aggressive to close the gap, he now has ambusher, surprise attack, three attacks in general on mm -hmm. that. So just stab, stab, stab. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, that's harsh. Uh, then the short sword, he has a plus seven to hit. Sure. Not bad. Uh, um, seven damage. 1d6 plus four. Harsh, of course. I mean, max it out, you're going to do ten points of damage. Yep. Um, if the target is a creature other than an undead or construct, yep. it must succeed on a DC 14 constitution saving throw or lose five 1d10 uh, HP at the start of each of its turns due to bleeding wounds. I like that. I do too. You don't see a lot of bleed effects. No, and I love them. I do too. So uh, I like that. Each time the killer hits the wounded target with this attack, the damage dealt by the wound increases by an additional 5 or 1d10. So 2d10 if you wanted. Yeah. Or 10 altogether. Now is it counting each separate wound? Yes. So three attacks. One, two, three. Three wounds. Those now all bleed. Yes. He can then hit you again and assume he's going to go for those same wounds because as a DM you can specify mm -hmm. or even make more. Yeah, well, because what it is is it's if he hits you, you got to make that con save. 
if you fail it, it's gonna yeah. start bleeding profusely. Yeah. If you and if he that's this first attack. If he hits you with the second one, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. So if literally if he hits you with six attacks in two turns, you're taking equivalent to 60 10 each turn. 60. At the start oh. of your next turn, you're taking 60 10. 1d10 for each wound. Yeah, so you have the possibility of running up 60 points of damage per round. And remember that first round, if he gets you with that surprise. There's a good possibility that you're making that that he's going to hit you. Oh. And I mean, if you really want to, if he crits on any of those, you can be like, "There's no save." Yeah, you you take it. Yeah, he he cuts you good. That's not all though. Um, any creature can take an action to uh, staunch staunch the wound with a successful DC 14 medicine. with the medicine check. The wound also closes if the target regains magical healing. So you can stop these. There's, yeah, there's ways around it. I like when you're taking your action. Yeah. Because you have to A, pass a medical check, a medicine check, which people don't usually take. Some no, they don't. I do when I'm running that kind of situation, yeah. but some people don't. And the other thing is we're getting magical healing. But yeah, you're taking an action. So it's not an outright kill and it becomes weighing the options. Do you let it bleed and hope that you can kill him? Mm. Or do you close the wound or treat the wound? Mm -hmm. I really like this guy. I like him a lot, too. Uh, I really do. Uh, the only thing that I would say is, yeah, giving this like a recharge of six. Yeah. And that's just personal preference for me. Yeah. Otherwise, he's super well-rounded. Make him a dude that, like, if he can't kill you outright, runs. He runs. I mean, my whole thing is, like, if, even if he does this, yeah, he's going to get 90 feet away from you. On yeah. his next turn, if you don't kill him. Yeah, he's going to motor. I mean, he can make it 90 feet in one turn. That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> Those fucking legs are Scooby-Doo running. He's, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's the flash step. He, he's gone. Straight up. Stone Strikes, man. You did it again. Yeah. That's a really good. That's I, a really well-rounded character. I would honestly, uh, Stone Strikes, if you ever... You know, watch one of these videos. Please contact us. Yeah, I would love to talk to you. I'd love to fucking pick your brain. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. Um, let's see, do we have any closing thoughts? I just really dig him. I, I too. All fucking well rounded man. I, I, I uh, back before my my life kind of became a little bit hectic, and I wasn't, a and I was before I was unable to run games constantly online. I hear you. Um, I had this campaign going. And uh, I actually was going to introduce him into the campaign uh, um, as a reoccurring villain. Sure. That who was actually the son of one of the PCs. I'll get you was, next time, Gadget. Pretty much. I get you. Um, and so I'm glad that I actually got to read over him again because uh, that was I like, like that a year idea ago. Too, by the way, that's a really good idea. Um, I really digged him, and the fact that the mask played a big part into that. Like, you didn't know who he was. Yeah. Um, and I would probably even put that. Well, I'm trying to think because there's movies like that where. It's the the villain is like a friend of the the, yeah. the the protagonist. Yeah, there there are those, and it's like that stab in the back betrayal. But still, it's a good trope for a reason. Yeah, and he did he put this out into stat block very well. Yes, it is it is very good, especially the fact that you you allow it to be any race. Yeah, it is really any cool. language, any race. Yeah, especially the fact that you know you didn't just give it common in one other language. No, it's just two languages. Whatever you want him to have. I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, boop. Here's one I've seen a couple of times. I have seen this one, too. Uh, Rasalka. Rasalka? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's see. This is Stone Strix. I, dude, bat a thousand. Go three for three with me, man. Make me happy because I am excited. So let's, let's take a little look at this picture real quick. It's, it's a dope picture. I've seen this picture quite a bit. Yeah, because, like... I think I uh, this is like what really catch it, caught my eye at first, mm -hmm. and then once I really started paying attention, I saw all that. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that. And it's like, oh my god, what? <laughs> that tripped me out because that could be a number of things, like siren style, yeah, yeah, the person to death, or she just fell into acid water. Ooh, that's that's <laughs> very very true, right? That's very true. And he's just holding on to what's left. <laughs> uh, she just fell into a gelatinous cube lake. Yes, <laughs> yes, that is actually a really good idea. Gelatinous cube lake, Gel gelatinous lake, gelatinous lake. Because really, it's like perfect because you've got like the skeleton yeah. version and all the other bones down here, and then just half of her. Yeah, like she's like, I'm good on this end, but the rest is not. 
not so much. It's not okay, man. I, I dig it. Uh, something that I like a lot. It's Faye. Faye. Faye undead. I hate Faye. I hate him. But I like what he's going with. And I like the undead aspect. I do too. I really like that. It's a weird combination. I'm going to have high hopes that he put it into function mm. very well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's see. We got... Uh, AC of 17, natural sure, armor. I'm with it. Which I find a little bit interesting, just because... I mean, I, I would probably do it a little lower, just make her easy to hit, but it depends on what else she can do. This is true. This is very true. First glance is, if you're going just straight off the picture, you're not looking at anything yeah. else, that definitely doesn't look like a natural 17 armor. Right. But depending on what she can do, mm -hmm. we'll see. Stone strict to you, you know, you, you haven't let us down so far, so we'll give you a benefit of the doubt off first glances. Yeah. Uh, HP, we got 97 base, or, sure. or uh, average. Yep. Uh, or 13 D8 plus 39. Yep. Bad. Not bad. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, 30 feet walk speed and mm -hmm. a 50 feet swim speed. Once so again, means... looking at the picture, I would almost think that she couldn't leave the lake. That's what I would think, too. Uh, and give it only a swim speed. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Let's see. Um, no negatives. We got a hell of a charisma. Yeah. I expect that. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Lower in baseline. Yep. Um, a lower strength. I expect that too. Yep. Uh, higher dex. The which con I, is pretty high too. That con is pretty high. Uh, deception plus seven, persuasion plus four, and a stealth of plus six. Sure. Okay. Hmm. That was um, common in Sylvan. Common in Sylvan. I'd probably tack in Abyssal. Okay. Since he's going with the undead feature. I got you. But that would be just me. I mean, I almost would put these things in, like, maybe the Underdark. Get no, I no? no, hell no. Hell no. This would definitely be the Feywild or somewhere close to a ley line. Right, I got you. Um, the challenge rating is surprising. CR4. Okay. Armor class and CR are kind of clashing. I still have high hopes. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so the first ability we see is Slippery. Mm -hmm. So it has advantage on ability checks and saving throws made to escape, escape a grapple. Okay. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Sure. It's kind of like a, a fish. It's going to be hard to <gasps> fish. I just thought of something. What if this wasn't the Rascala? What if the water was the Rascala? Okay. Which would give it the higher AC, the natural armor. Okay. And that's the persuasion and the deception and everything else. Uh, I feel you. Tactics. Okay. And that this is just the end of the, the, just the, the, the end result of what happens. Yeah. It's literally gelatinous lake. It's gelatinous. Okay. <laughs> I, I can kind of dig this. So let's see. <laughs> so unnatural beauty. No. All right. <laughs> it's the picture. Um, it, it, it appears different and uh, un, are un uniquely. uniquely beautiful to match the taste of each humanoid that perceives it. Okay. A true sight reveals it to be the true undead form. Sure. So, so what this is right here is the actual form. Yeah. But what he sees here is this, and it's just murky water. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it is just an undead fey, but they cover up as, as the fey half of it as a pretty person. Yeah. Well, the undead half. Yeah. Of it as, as, as that yeah you know, and it's each person sees it differently yeah as whatever they see most beautiful i assume taco cat what nothing <laughs> uh water bond yep uh or bound water bound yep uh it cannot willingly leave the body of water to which it is bound uh if forcibly removed it takes 11 or 2d10 necrotic damage every minute until it returns so that's where the walking speed comes from Okay, so it can get back, essentially. Yeah, it's not doomed to death being pulled out. It can get away. I think it's a little weird at the fact that it's undead and taking necrotic. But it's a fey. Eh, true. I mean, I, I have to give... I have to side on the air of it's a fey still at part, but it's a dead fey. Right. So that would be me. I know the videos on up. No, I, I just realized, guys, that I forgot to screen share when we got back. Oh. Sorry, guys. 
Womp, womp. So, so let me let me show you this real quick. This is what we're talking about with the 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 Fey Undead. I really do apologize, guys. Um, well, let me go back real quick to show you Mass Killer. Did the yeah, the Mass Killer was the last one we did. Yep, I believe because I think we this, might not have done that one with the okay. camera. Yeah. Okay. So th this is the keeper of of the old lords. That's Duck Bill Hat. Duck Bill Hat. Boop, boop, boop. Cool picture. Yeah. Um. Then let's see. This is the mass killer. This is the one that we really like. Mm -hmm. Um. And then this is the one we're currently on. Yep. I do apologize, guys. Um. So let's see. I mean, maybe we all can't be winners, and maybe the necrotic damage is a little off. I'm just thinking of Faye, because even though they're dead, sometimes necrotic damage still can hurt. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not always a uh, an immunity to undead. Mm -hmm. Because necrotic damage in and of itself, yeah, it can pull life force away, and it draws away life force, but it can also degrade and, like... True. That's, that, uh, yeah, you got a very good point there. So, a little on the iffy side. Um, but I, I get where he's coming from. Uh, so going down to the uh, actions, you yep. got charm. So one humanoid uh, that it can see within 100 feet of it Okay. Let's make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. Are we magically charmed for an hour? That's a hell of a range. That is that's a big range. Mm -hmm. uh, the charmed target must spend... <laughs> I like that. I read it ahead of you. Oh, uh, the charmed target must spend its turn trying to move as close to it <laughs> as it can. Uh, the target cannot take reactions. Uh, and for its actions, it can only use the dash action. Uh, if the target... That's why I was laughing. It's just like, oh. you're moving close, man. Yeah, you're, and you're running. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it'd be kind of interesting. I mean, these, I guess these are sirens. Yeah. These are bound, the ones that are bound to the ocean. Sure. It, the ocean is one body of water. Yeah. So. And I mean, they'd be technically be fey. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense. It's just this one's got a little bit of dead to it. <laughs> it's just got a little bit of dead. And I mean, you know what? Maybe change the classification to. Just leave it as Fey and not make it an undead because Fey can still be skeletal. Yeah. It could have just been more labeled off to match the picture. Mm hmm. Maybe. I really do think the picture, though. The fucking art that he gets done, man. I don't know if he just finds these pictures. I don't or know. If he because... has someone commission this shit, but the art that he has for everyone that he's done so far has been us. Sounding. And they're all different people. Yeah, yeah. The, this is uh, the art is Emil from Jadzak. Yeah. Uh, so this is his artwork. That's a pretty awesome. Um, so let's see. What else does this uh, little thing do? Dash uh, action. So if it's harmed, uh, it can repeat the saving throw. Mm -hmm. If it's harmed. Yes. If it's not harmed. It's just charmed. It's straight up charmed. There's no saving throw at the beginning of your next turn. Nope. Uh, so, you know, and this thing, if it's if you play it smart, it's not going to harm them until they're in the water. Yeah, it's going to kill them. And then they're going to swim down to the bottom of the lake. And then they're going to have to try and swim down to the bottom of the lake and just die. Mm -hmm. So your party members, your party mates, or whoever, whatever you want to say, are going to have to hurt you. Um, so, uh, if the target is successfully saves against the effect or if the effect ends, it is immune to the, its charm for the next 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So that's a big plus side. It's not like every time I blink, I'm now yeah. going to have to make this again. Yeah. Um, it can only have one target charm target at a time, which is a good inhibitor. Yes. A good limiter for it. Because instead of like, okay, this turn I'm charming you, next turn you, then you. All of you run to me. Yeah, because that's going to get. Uh, uh, that, that has the potential to be super broken. It does. So it's a good thing that that was added. Yeah, he put that limiter in and it's. Now it can attempt to charm another one and the previous effect just ends. Yeah, so it can charm whoever it wants. It's just going to end whatever current charm is going on. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as soon as you jump in the water, it can end that charm and charm somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it's got tresses. Um, so plus six to hit, uh, range of 10 feet, mm -hmm. um, 
14 on a hit, or 3d6 plus 4, bludgeoning damage. And the target is grappled. And it, period. It's grappled. With a DC escape of 16. That's pretty high. Yeah. Um, and, and on that same go, it's pulled 5 feet towards it. Yep. Um, so it's going to be pulled from 10 feet to 5 feet. Um, until this grapple ends, the target is restrained and uh, tries to drown it. And the target can't use its tresses on another target. Yeah. Okay. Tickle. Tickle! I'm trying to see what it is. I okay. Would, I would seem like there's rope or vine or tendrils. Right. Something to wrap up in it. Because mm. you have to assume that she has magical something. Yeah. So being in the water, maybe like long pieces of seaweed or kelp or rope or kind of something. Maybe it's kind of like a, what is it, a, uh, a symbiotic relationship between the, the body of water and it. Sure. It's just where it's bound to. Uh, tickle is the last little attack for it or action. One creature grappled by the Resolve. this thing, yep, the blah blah blah, uh, must succeed on a DC 14 Constitution saving throw or be incapacitated with laughter for one minute. Oh. The target can repeat the saving throw. It doesn't matter if it's underwater. <laughs> if it's underwater and it laughs, it's losing its air, and now it begins to, to drown. <laughs> yeah, you're 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 gonna start drowning. I, how would you play drowning? After the after the, that, you're taking like one, what maybe like two d ten per clip because it, it does have it in there. It does it. Mm -hmm. Okay, the DMG does have something that manages drowning in one of the books. It's there, and uh, it's it's some amount of dice roll per turn. Okay, till you're dead. I got you because you only have X amount of minutes of breath per your modifier for your con. Mm -hmm. So if you have a con mod of one, you hold your breath for a minute. After that minute, if you haven't broken out or surfaced and gotten a breath, you're now taking X amount of dice damage per turn due to drowning. Yeah. I wonder how do you handle negative cons? Negative cons, you don't hold breath. Yeah, but you like gulp in. Yeah. Drinking. <laughs> and now you're taking damage. All right. So Personally, mm, probably my least favorite from Stone Tricks. Sure. Mm, but in, in overall, just as this as it is, I do like it. Mm -hmm. Not my favorite, though. All right. Uh, in terms of Stone Tricks, uh, I dig it. Mm. I really dig it. I think that this one might be my favorite. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think that this one might be my favorite because this one takes the most skill to play. Okay, I feel you there. Um, it's a pain in the ass to deal with, but if done right, um, if if played correctly by a DM, I think can be a nightmare. <laughs> because it doesn't take much to kill it, but it has a pretty decent armor. Mm-hmm. It can swim away, it can hide, but it has a charm of 100 feet. Right. So it can just pop charms on people. And just to keep them at bay for a minute. They get closer, she hits you with a tress, and then, cool. Good deal, you're grappled. You don't break out of that grapple, and you're getting close to the water, tickle, tickle. Right. And there's just ways around it. I Something that I think would be kind of interesting mm -hmm. is... Uh, I think I'm I'm a big fan of the uh, long con, sure, and maybe putting players a party in a situation where they are near a long stretch of river, sure, and, and can with, travel, and yeah, but don't introduce it off the bat. No. Play a lot of night scenes, sure, and have this thing at night because they don't have to see it. No, they, he, it just has to see them mm -hmm. at night. You know, coming out of the water and then trying to charm them to yeah. come into the water. Yeah, as long as she's bound to that body of water, if it's like the Amazon fucking river, right? It's she can move in it. And so, yeah, it, 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 like one of these things where it appears as one of these things and then there's 20 of them. Okay, so you're, you're a fan of King Arthur and Camelot. That's the lady in the lake. Yeah! I would dig that. Yeah! Like, just doesn't leave the lake. Talks about giving you great power. Yeah, it's it just tempt, tempt, tempt. I mean, 
and you know even these things could even just straight up fool you yeah you know Blah, 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 blah. Oh my God! Help me! Blah, 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 blah. Drowning. Gonna, somebody's gonna jump in. Mm-hmm. Most of my characters that I've played would jump in. <laughs> yeah. Not thinking, you know, that y'all saw alligators in this water like yesterday. What? I don't care. I'm going in. <laughs> going in. It's worth it <laughs> for the greater good. <laughs> yeah. So that's how I would run it, and I think that that play style for me might make me like them a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And probably running them would make might make me like them. more. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I like this one the most just because of all the espionage and, like, tactic that's involved. Mm-hmm. Mass Killer is way up there, too. There's It's really hard to pick a favorite favorite. Right. But I just, I dig it. I just do. I mean, I dig all the other ones just as much. It's just, I think this would be the first one I would put in. Like the, what was it, the Astral? The Astral Chimera? Was that part of Stone Strix? Oh, I don't know. Let's go look. No, Tiny Doll. Yeah, Tiny Doll, or the Evil Doll was evil doll. Stone Strix. And then the Mass Killer, and then Rasal- Rasalka. Yep. Okay. All right, so last one, as y'all kind of ca- caught glimpses of, Ooh. is the Storm Wolf. Yay! Which I, I I wanted to throw something like this in there. Mm-hmm. Don't use your normal wolf. Use this. <laughs> I think down here it'll it'll give us who. Uh, uh, by. Fuck! I can't read that. Grips wolf. It, it's uh, that's a wolf right there. Gray wolf. Maybe. Bad right. pixelation. Yeah. Homebrew by. Oh. Ferdinand Grandabang. <laughs> yeah. So if this is yours, please let us I'm, know. Fire Axle? Yeah. Fire Axle, yeah! That's what I'm getting from it. I'm just yeah. going to go by that little signia there, that watermark. So, so, yeah, so there's the Flame Wolf. Or Flame Wolf, oh my god. Storm Wolf. Storm Wolf. Get your shit. Uh, Pack it in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... <laughs> Um, in uh, in places where the sky strikes the land with lances of lightning, there are creatures known as storm wolves. Uh, these beasts prowl such places in search of prey. Yeah. So it's a large beast. I'm with it. Uh, unaligned. Uh, AC of 13, natural armor. Of yeah. Of course. Uh, we got CR3, so 13 AC. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, 75 HP. Has a Speed of 50. Well, I would freaking hope so. <laughs> it's got fucking lightning working off of it. Yeah, it's <laughs> lightning wolf. I it's, expect it to be fast. Yes. And it's yellow. Um, I honestly would have liked an intelligence to be a little bit higher. Mm, it's a negative two, and then the charisma is a negative one. I can understand that. I can understand charisma, but I, I, I like I said, I kind of it, either the, the intelligence to be at least 10 or Smart the wisdom yeah. to be higher. Yeah. Um, the wisdom I wouldn't put higher, but the intelligence I would definitely want at least an average. It's smart yeah. enough to hunt. It has basic instincts. Right. Well, that's why, like, if you kept the intelligence low to increase the wisdom. Yeah. Or, you know, at least bring that up to 10. Sure. Um, otherwise, strength is the big one. I would make dex the big one. That's what I was thinking, too, is dex would be either on par with strength or higher, if nothing yeah. else. Um, got perception plus five and stealth plus three. Gotcha. Uh, and immunity to lightning. I would I hope so. That. Yeah. Uh, passive of fifteen. It can speak uh, common giant and primordial. See, but with the intelligence so low, the fact that it speaks three languages. Yeah. It speaks at all. That's like the uh, era. Yeah. Now, um, the resistance to or the immunities to lightning. I would also kick in thunder. Yeah. I would, I, yeah, definitely. You know, it's a storm wolf. It's not a lightning wolf. It's a storm wolf. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of lightning arcing off of it, but you don't see thunder. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thunder, you only hear. <laughs> if you see thunder, seek help. Seek help. Because now you're seeing that, that, sounds. That's some. So that's some advanced form of of uh, magic there. Yeah. Uh, you got uh, keen hearing and smell, just like any other wolf. Yeah. God, that fucking so. Blotchy and pixely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Just the copy I found, I guess. No, that's fine. It happens, dude. Uh, you got basic pack tactics, just like normal wolves. I'm with you there. Uh, so these base abilities are straight out the wolf. Uh, yeah. So it's so far, it's just like a normal wolf, except with some immunity. Sure. And the fact that he can talk. Yep. Um, Bigger. Yeah. Got a bite. Plus six to hit. Uh, Eleven on average. And if it and it or it can be not. So that's basically a wolf. I think it's a little bit stronger than a wolf. Yeah, it's about a dire wolf. Or like I would have liked some wolf. lightning damage with that bite. There might be, though. Not with this one. There might be in terms of... Oh, no, it's a ranged weapon. That's interesting. Oh, uh, wait, because he also... There's more to that bite, man. Yeah, oh, okay, I'm sorry. It's a basic wolf attack. So if, if it's a creature, it must succeed on a DC 14 strength save or be knocked prone. Yeah. Um, so there's that, and then static burst for the people who can read the blockiness. <laughs> Pikachu Thunderbolt, yeah, I mean, kind of <laughs> ranged weapon plus three to hit five foot range. That's why that's not a range, or that's not a ranged weapon, then it's a melee, yeah. Wait, range, ranged weapon attack. Plus three to hit, range five foot, creatures within five feet. What? <sighs> creatures hit, can't take reactions. Uh, I, 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 I'm starting to lose that one. Yeah, that yeah, one's... I think... I in, First off, increase the range. It's not five feet. Yeah. That's that's a melee attack. And then after that, I think what they're trying to go for is any creature within five feet of where it hits. Oh, okay. And, it, and it's like, hits all of them. Okay. Or it's like a five feet uh, radius. Five foot okay. radius. Yep. Because it's a plus four to hit. Wait. It's a plus three to hit. Oh, hit is... Okay. Is 1d8 or 4 average lightning damage. Creatures can't take reaction until the start of their next turn. Okay. Oh, it's a little wiggly. Yeah. I'm not super happy about it. And I'm still lacking lightning damage as far as bite lightning. Yeah. Bite lightning. Bite lightning. I like that. I would have liked to see some, some lightning damage with the bite. Mm -hmm. uh, then Thunderous Howl. That sounds really cool. Yep. Uh, the which once again you're you're including thunder in here, but nothing else is is. That's the first time you mention it. Yeah. Other than the description. Um, the uh, the wolf emits a wave of thunderous force that sweeps out from it. Each creature in a fifteen foot cube, uh, originating from the wolf, must make a DC fourteen Constitution saving throw. Um, on a failed save, a creature takes two D eight thunder damage and is pushed ten feet away. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much and is not pushed. Sure. Um, in addition, unsecured objects... Okay, so it's Thunder Wave. It is. I would change that. I would make them have to do a constitution saving throw or be deafened. Yeah, I would agree. You're howling. Give them the thunder damage. Mm. But deafen those dudes that don't make that run. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I would... I would probably do that as like a recharge thing. No, yes. no damage. Yeah. But you know they're going to be deafened. Even even deafened and knocking prone. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I could see both of those combined. I would like to see though a thunderous howl that's maybe a combination. Uh, it's a cone, mm -hmm. or even just a line. Probably a cone with with a howl. Yeah, it's a breath weapon. And yeah, that's thunder and lightning damage. Sure. It's just like <laughs> now see. I could agree with that, and I think it would be good, but I would also say leave Thunderous Howl as it is. Mm -hmm. Take the damage out. Mm -hmm. Cone, if they fail the DC, they are deafened, and they are knocked prone. <laughs> right? That wave hits them over. Give the bite uh, lightning damage, and then static burst make thunder damage. Like an emitting range. Like right. It, Chuffs out or it slams the ground in thunder. Mm. Yeah, I would also kind of uh, have liked to see maybe some kind of fly speed. It's a yeah. something, it's a storm wolf. I know you're like, it's a storm wolf, as well as something kind of like striking the ground. 
as it like oh sh- like lightning striking the ground and it creating a a sure thing it travels on lightning and storm clouds something yeah like storm like like traveling on a storm cloud or like something. the uh, astral chimera give yes. it a fog cloud and let it travel yeah. that way. Give it like innate spell casting that's basic or call something. Thunder. Call thunder or call lightning or whatever it is. But yeah, that would be awesome. That would be cool. That to me is this just screams that. Telltale signs that it's you're in a pack area or it's hunting grounds. There's always constantly storms and lightning strikes for no reason, even on a clear day. Yeah. I mean, and it may be something kind of like a legend is you can tell how many are in the area by how many times the lightning strikes the ground, however often. In a certain amount of seconds, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and maybe you just see, or maybe every time they make a kill or something, sure. and something that can lead up to that, you know, maybe a session or two beforehand, you let the players in on that. Sure. And then they come into this area, and they're like, okay, look, we're in a storm area, and that's like maybe the guide, and they're like, how do you know? And they, they point up to the sky, and it's just like, and they're like, oh my god. <laughs> Instead of having the uh, the traditional like thunder rumble of impact, make it a howl. That'd be pretty dope. Like they they don't travel on land, but they attack from that call oh. lightning. So they come down as lightning strikes, and when they hit the ground, it's, it's kind of like a reverse uh, reverse uh, great white. So instead of coming up from the bottom, yeah, it's come from the top. They come straight from the down. Top. That would be really they can awesome. only stay on ground for so long, or they dissipate out. That because makes a lot of sense. Ground, the earth, is a, a dampener, mm-hmm. and it pulls all the electricity down. So they hit the ground, and they can only be there for so many rounds, or they start to dissipate. They take damage over time. I like that. That's a really good so idea. So they jump back up, and they're back up in the clouds. Mm. And then you can't really target them unless you know where they went. Right. But then they strike back down again, and it's like bite by bite up and away. Mm-hmm. That'd be dope. That, that really would be... <laughs> Um, that that is pretty pretty good idea. That fits the motif of Stormwolf a little more for me. That I I would agree with that. So I like the concept. I would change quite a few things about it to our ideas, <laughs> because clearly our ideas are the best ideas. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't agree with it, you're just wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong, and your family dislikes you. <laughs> I like the little mohawk this thing's got going on. Yeah, the, the crest <laughs> yeah. from the fur. Yeah. Well, it's because he lost static dude. Um, and it's a hell of a good like, picture. Of that her. seems like a like a gem to me. Kind of. And I think that would be kind of dope. He like, also has a massive ear hole. <laughs> it's like, gauges. Yeah, right? <laughs> he's, he's the one wolf of the pack that everyone shunned. That's, so he just went super angsty and like, scene boy. But I, I, but I think that might be kind of interesting because, like, this gives me the concept of a gem or some kind of oh, jewel in their head. Yeah, and make like you know that's one yeah, of those it's items. A summon or an item that the players can have or a summon to call them down, like a once use recharge kind of thing. Yeah, either that or yeah, maybe it's something like that. Maybe either when you break it, it calls a pack of these things. Sure, and you know it, it's basically fucking call lightning. Yeah. And but doom, let's doom, get doom, out doom, of here, guys. Yeah. This, this this area, we've got a bomb strike coming in. <laughs> yeah, and like you could you could manage to get one. I mean, what are they unaligned? Um, yeah, they're unaligned. Yeah. Okay, so they're not bad. They're not good. I mean, if you're able to, if you're able to get on the good side of it, maybe it'll fucking give you one. I mean, it speaks, so it goes to the alpha of the pack. That's what I would think. Yeah. Uh, so many ideas going through there. <laughs> I, don't be fucking I'm, surprised I'm if this kind of fucking storm, concept. I'm storm Mowgli. <laughs> don't don't be surprised if this fucking concept that we're going over right now happens to show up in God Kill the Killers. I would love it because it's like it's speaking to my soul right now. You guys are only in that one area right now. Yeah, you guys have not seen yeah any of the rest of the world. No. No, I, I I like the concept and the inspiration yeah. that this gives. I probably would have advi- uh, adjusted a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think that's it. That is it as far as yeah. That's all the homebrews we've got right now. Bloop. Um, but I would I I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, if y'all hear the monkey in the background, that would be my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Um, boop, 
boop. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I really enjoyed this. I think this was really, really fun um, going over some really different ideas. Uh, if y'all like this, then let us know in the comments how you would use some of these things. Um, if you would like to see more of these videos, because um, like me and Dave said, we really enjoyed this. There were some really cool ideas in there. Yeah. Um, and oh God, what was what was his name? Uh, oh, his name was uh, uh, Stone Strix. Stone Strix. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm gonna be looking up uh, Stone Strix. Uh, I found all these on Pinterest, so I'm going to go on Pinterest and try and see if I can find uh, his, your profile. Um, and If you don't reach out to us, we're probably going to reach I'm, out I'm going to find you. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> true. I know you did. Yeah. Well, he, you, he just does a really good job with it, and I can't, like, no. where one of our big things is making homebrew NPCs. Yeah. Especially, like, monster sort of, like, enemy NPCs in a yeah. sense. To be able to pick this dude's brain and just look at like the time that went into that mm -hmm. is a big deal. Yes. Because we make them pretty quick, but there are a lot of nights where we sit here and we're like, okay, we're going to do this, we'll do that, and just talking and breaking this dude down. Yeah, there, there's, there's been like one or two nights where we literally only did one character and didn't even finish them. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, good on you, Stone Strix. Hell of a job you've done. I really dig them. Yeah. We're going to find more, and we'll talk about them. Probably very soon. Yep, yep. So, till next time, guys. If you have any uh, homebrews you want us to find, give us a, an idea. Like, oh, find. Uh, if they're all over the place, this is an example. But find Darth Vader. Sure, we will have like three different versions yeah. of Darth Vader. We, 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 yeah, yeah, we, we have a bunch of really out there, uh, like, uh, creatures from the Black Lagoon. I have. I know, have Xenomorphs. Xenomorphs, yeah. Uh, slivers from Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Uh, maybe if you want a whole episode based around water encounters, sure. things to do in the water, things to do underground, things, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, if you want all, uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, devil homebrew stuff that I found um, for a game that I thought would be interesting called The End of Humanity. Um, so, yeah, let, let us know what, what y'all might like to see. Yeah, we're open to anything. Um, any closing thoughts besides that? Other than then, I'm Dave. He's Jim. Thanks for looking behind the screen. Don't bruise your melon. Don't bruise your melon. <laughs> Where did that even come from? I don't know, dude. <laughs> don't bruise your melon. Bye, guys.